I'm the senior minister here at Columbine Spiritual Center, and we welcome you to our Christmas Eve service, which we're calling When Nobody's Watching. We're so grateful to have people in our sanctuary again on Christmas Eve. It's been three years. So, thank you for being here, and thank you to all of you online who are watching with us. We are so blessed to have you with us. Part of the process of creating a Christmas Eve service is to create sacred space. In the sacred, there's a quality of quietness, of stillness, of peacefulness, no matter what's going on around us. So to help us hold that space, we ask you to please silence your cell phones and please hold your applause until the end of the service. It's I know it's really hard to do. <laughs> but we're a community-based church, and we've been building our children's program over the last year and a half. We had over 40 kids here at the first service, and we couldn't have been more excited about that. They brought a, an energy and a sense of aliveness. And while we love that energy, if you have children here and they get a little fussy, we invite you to use our wiggle room, which is in the back or in the lobby, or take them into the lobby until they can settle down. So we can keep that space of quietness and stillness here in our sanctuary. So with that, please pray with me. I invite you to gently close your eyes and take a deep breath as we pray. Sweet, loving spirit, we take a moment to pause in the excitement and wonder of this evening to acknowledge your presence and to acknowledge the Christ presence within, within each and every one of us. When nobody's watching, great things can be happening within us as we listen to our divine guidance and follow our own path, a path that always invites us into a new way of loving, a new way of being. That new way of being challenges us to bring more love into the world, a world that desperately needs it. And so we listen, we allow, and we go wherever spirit is sending us, always with the Christmas spirit that embodies hope, peace, love, and joy. And so it is. Amen.
so it's never ending, everlasting, everlasting, and you know it's on to heaven. You get the God message and the aim is a lesson, and quit the direct message and the messages are festering, softening our hearts and it's reaching all the people. We do this in the street and underneath the steeple. I'd rather talk the talk, but the young ones walk the walk. They are crawling in the dark, but my voice is in a torch. Drink the wine, eat the bread, hark upon the words he said. The secret, take a peek, everybody take a peek at the heart of the matter. He's the king of the kings. Married to the church, I got the Lord of the Rings. Gold streets where I'm dancing. Father got mansions, beating God's image. What do you fathom? I heard the story to grow. Hey, so it's time to go. Hey, hey, I heard the story to grow. Love and light, so it's time to go. Hey, hey, I heard the story to grow. Love and light, so it's time to go. Go where I send thee. How many of us will go blindly where we're sent, either in our physical world or in our consciousness when we're guided? Not many, I think. We want to be in charge, right? Not realizing that life is so much more simple and fluid when we do follow our guidance. Instead, we dig in our heels and expect things to go our way. One child wrote a letter to Santa which read, Dear Santa, you did not bring me anything good last year. You did not bring me anything good the year before that. This is your last chance, signed Alfred. <laughs> Can you relate? These past three years have been challenging for most of us. We've experienced immense change in our communities, in our society, and in our world. We've seen the country become more divided and experienced a lot of fear and anger. It's impacted our relationships, our workplaces, our families, and our friendships. We think this is our last chance. And yet, we've also witnessed many people doing incredible acts of kindness for their neighbors, strengthening their relationships, and getting clarity of their mission and purpose in life. Truly living the commandment, loving, love your neighbor as yourself. We're about to watch a video that honors these people that have done acts of kindness for others, for these unsung heroes from the past three years who have cared for others and helped others, who have demonstrated that Christmas is about giving out of a sense of the overflow of love that is within us when nobody's watching, or are they?
come all ye faithful, come to this place of awareness of our own innate goodness. Come as if we haven't yet arrived. We're being invited to witness our own birth. It's interesting that Christmas is a holiday where we often celebrate the night before the event, on the eve of the event. My friend, Reverend Juan Deliero in Miami, says we are celebrating before the big day takes place. Most celebrations in our lives, think about our birthday or graduation, are celebrated after the accomplishment. But on Christmas Eve, we celebrate the coming of a birth. We recall the journey that Mary and Joseph took and had to find a place to give birth. And there was no room in the inn. There's no room in the inn of our consciousness when we're filled with resentment or anger or fear. We need to make room for a new awareness in our minds and celebrate its coming in glorious anticipation. Christmas Eve celebrates with hope and faith that the birth will take place. And when it does, we realize in a new way the understanding that the Christ present is within us. Love's presence is within each of us as it was within the women and the children who were watching her in the video. In each and every human being, the essence of love and goodness is present, even in those people who drive you crazy. Love's presence is there. No matter what's going on around us, we're always invited to express from that innate goodness. When we become aware of that goodness, we allow it to flow and the light of understanding begins to brighten. On this Christmas Eve, we're lighting four candles to celebrate and recognize the good on the cusp of receiving its gifts. We light the first of four candles this evening to represent the Christ presence within us and within all of humanity celebrating our innate goodness. When we can recognize this within ourselves and then within each other, we begin to birth a new awareness of ourselves as spiritual beings, which is, about, which is what unity, Christmas, is all about in unity.
Gospel of Matthew comes a story. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them when the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, Bring me word so that I also may pay him homage. When they heard the king, they went out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The wise men in our scriptures represent our power of wisdom, our ability to discern guidance and follow it. They were on a journey following their guidance. Unity's fifth principle is that we must act. We must move forward. Life is not static. And even though we celebrate Christmas every year, we bring a freshness to it every time we birth a new, a new awareness of who we are as spiritual beings beings. We honor each path we take because each path helps us get closer to knowing ourselves and knowing ourselves as divine. Some paths may take longer than others, but each of us has had many paths, many journeys. Some journeys have been adventurous, some have been enlightening, some painful, some just plain fun. And as we've embarked on each one, there's been a voice or a knowing or some sign nudging us forward, whispering this way. That's what the star represents, the intuition in us lighting the way. We light our second candle tonight to honor all the various journeys we have taken in our lives, knowing that all paths lead to blessings when we say yes and are open to following the divine guidance within.
Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy had come to save our daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to our blood? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm? Walked where angels trod. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? 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 We often don't know where spirit is leading us. Guidance doesn't come with a well laid out plan. Mary probably didn't know the magnitude of her saying yes. She represents that part of us that is able to completely surrender with total willingness. How many of us can do that? Do we allow spiritual guidance to, into our awareness, or do we think we have the answers and we know the way? It can be challenging to put the ego aside and just let events unfold. So what journey do you find yourself on right now? This third candle casts light on where you're going, what you're doing, who you're becoming. If you resonate with what you see, what you're doing, Continue on your path. And if not, you always have the opportunity to choose again. Choose a more loving, honoring path for yourself and for those in your life.
Reverend Eric Butterworth says, Christmas has little magic in it when we are just looking backward to worship the child in a manger. Magic is found by looking forward to that day when our own Christ child may unfold in our lives, a time to look inward to its presence right now. And that presence is pure love. It's what we're made of. It's what we're made for. And it's up to us to allow it into our lives, to ask for divine guidance, which will always be for us and never against us always before our good, to get us ready to receive more magnificence, more blessings, more love in our lives. We affirm that love's presence is within us, always inviting us forth with faith and hope for what's to come. Living in the present moment with excitement, knowing that we simply need to ask and we will receive it. So we ask and we receive guidance on what is ours to do in response to the challenging, challenging times or the challenges that we face in our lives right now. We light this fourth candle to affirm this is our Eve, the moment before a magnificent manifestation when a new awareness of the Christ with us, within us is born, a holy night indeed. Oh 
After this next song, we're going to begin our candle lighting ceremony. I invite you to treat the act of lighting your candle as a recommitment to turning within and hearing your own divine guidance. Our ushers are going to be the carriers of our light tonight. And after this next song, they will come forward and light their candles from our Christ candle on our altar. They're then going to move down the aisles and light a candle from whoever is sitting on the exit row. They're going to give you an affirmation, which is love's presence is within you. So I invite you, after you light your own candle, you turn to your neighbor and you share that affirmation with each other, that love's presence is within you. So it's been a while, so we need to review a little bit of candle etiquette. <laughs> Once your candle is lit, it needs to stay upright. The person whose candle is being lit tips it to your lit candle. Otherwise, you're going to get a lap full of wax. So, and if you have children with you, please help them so that we can all do this safely. Again, as you light your, each other's candles, please look into each other's eyes and say, love's presence is within you. It's true. Love's presence is within you. You may, you may question it sometimes, but you don't have to wonder about it. It's always, always there. Love's presence is within each one of us. Savior did come for to 
So the choir will be blowing their candles out for safety purposes on the risers, but please keep your candle lit for this next song. extinguish our candles, but know that the light within you can never be extinguished. So let's blow out our candles. This is a time in our service where we gratefully receive your love offerings, your blessings, your support. Please know that it comes from not a sense of obligation, but a sense of the flow of giving and receiving, and that we are grateful for every dollar that comes our way because we are self-supporting ministry and your donations help us do what we do here at Columbine. We also want to recognize that many of you are here maybe for the first time. You don't consider yourself a part of our community. Know that you are always welcome here, always. And we thank you for your generosity as well. So we have an offertory blessing that we like to say on every Sunday. So it's up on the screens. Let's say that together. God's love has always met and will always meet all my needs. I give freely, I receive abundantly, and I am grateful. Amen. Thank you.
shines his light. Prophets all foretold the birth of a holy child. You'll find him in a manger, so lowly me can. Angels in the heavens will hear the news they bring. Calling us to rise up, to worship Christ the King. Leave behind your worries, your troubles and cares. You tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. and follow your star. I hope you continue to celebrate this Christmas season and you laugh and sing and dance as if nobody's watching. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> You're wonderful, and you are the bond that holds this community together. I love you.
Go home.